We have about 20, 25 minutes this morning for testimony, so let's uh, have you make your way to the front. Come on up and give a testimony, share what God has done or a blessing in your life. And so we'll pause for a moment and you come on up, all right? And the microphones are actually here and we've extended them as far as the cords will go this morning. So use the opportunity to come. I think if we just stood where we were, you may not be able to hear real well. So I'll ask you to use the mics and um, trust even if you're sitting in some of the middle sections, you can make your way out there. So uh, we did the risky thing. We're not doing groups of songs in between testimonies. Testimony. Come on up and give a testimony then, please. Anyone? Hi, everyone. Hello. It's uh, great that I can uh, just be here and uh, be in front of you guys and just say uh, a word uh, of testimony and uh, give praise to God. I uh, am uh, just honored to be able to do that. Uh, I've been working, and God's been working in my life to really practice out. Uh, my faith. Uh, kind of in James 1 talks about the, uh, you know, uh, faith is completed with uh, the works. And uh, and so I've been uh, taking a lot of time trying to strive uh, and discipline myself for godliness. I was going to say strive for uh, godliness, but the picture of disciplining ourselves, I think, is a picture I want to leave with you guys and uh, to... Uh, to uh, Focus your minds and your hearts on pleasing the Lord. And, uh, you know, we sinned uh, last night. I got into it with, with my roommate, Brent. I'm sorry, Brent. Um, but uh, we need to work out, uh, live out what uh, we have in our minds, live it out in our hearts. Uh, my name is Alyssa McClanahan, for those of you that don't know. And one of the biggest things that I've um, really been thankful for since I've come to Clearwater is the godly friends that God's given me. Um, before I came to Clearwater, I had prayed so hard that I would just get mixed up in the right crowd and um, have friends around me that would encourage me spiritually and constantly be challenging me to grow as a Christian and in my walk with uh, the Lord and just keeping me accountable. And since I've been here... It's just been wonderful. God's blessed me so much with um, the best group of friends that I could ever ask for, uh, especially my unit. I love it. We're so tight. And um, Proverbs 27, 17 um, talks about iron sharpness iron and just how important it is. You know, you hear all the time you are, you know, who you hang around with. You're going to be like them. And it's so easy to just pass it up. But seriously, I mean, who you hang around with is exactly who you're going to end up being like, whether you don't realize it or not. And I'm just very thankful for the friends that God has given me here. Thank you. I was really challenged over Christmas break, especially by my mother, um, who has take, who took it on last year to read through the Bible. And she made it all the way through. She even started late, but she kept up and, and got up early and was able to make it all the way through. And so while I was home on break, she really challenged me to... Um, Make sure that I'm, I'm reading, not just for the sake of reading through, but also reading so that I can gain knowledge about Christ and try to apply it to my life. You know, always trying to find something, some little bit that will jump out at me and, and that I can learn from. And, and even recently I've been starting uh, keeping a journal of all the thoughts that have popped up into me. And it's been a real encouragement to go back through those every once in a while and just see what the Lord has brought to my mind at different days. And uh, sometimes you go through and you, you remember something that you had found before and maybe it didn't really apply to me at that time but um you read back through them and you see oh man that's right he does he does take care of us he does watch over us all the time and or it's just something that really sticks out to you even again the second time so i would encourage each of you to do that it's it's been a great experience for me and uh so thank you Hey guys, my name is Emily, and um, sometimes it seems like God just is teaching you one thing. He keeps bringing it back into your life, and maybe because you're not completely getting it. And this year, God has really been teaching me about trusting in Him. 
and just completely. And um, and little things in day to day, and just getting through homework sometimes. But especially in big things, um, I know some of you guys are involved in the military, or maybe you have family that are in the military. And um, recently, about half a year ago, my brother joined the military, and he's an Army Ranger. And um, I'm so proud of him. But I don't really know where he is. He's somewhere serving. And it's really hard for me to just trust God with that and um, just trust his safety because we hear about, you know, like people dying and we don't even hear about what a lot of them do, but just knowing that they're going through so much. And um, But that's something that I've just had to trust with God and, um, and God's been helping me with that. And also about two months ago, um, my dad has a lot of health problems and he had to stop working um, just for health reasons. He had to retire from a doctor. And... Um, it was really hard to be here and to not be with my parents back home just because they were just kind of hanging out. Then they were trusting God, and that was such an example to me that they weren't freaking out, even though I kind of wanted to. And um, But they were just trusting that God was going to provide. And my mom started looking for a job, and um, about a month ago, well, no, a few weeks ago, she got a job. And it's not like a doctor or anything like that. But um, it was just neat to see how just trusting in God and just giving it to him is trusting him that he will provide. And also my dad is going to be able to go back to work now, um, at least part-time. So it's just, just trust the Lord with whatever thing you're going through. It might be just huge or might just, you might seem it's so little, but just keep trusting him. I kind of thought my heart would stop beating so hard once I got up here, but it doesn't really. Um, anyway... <laughs> Uh, my name is Ben. Uh, some of you probably know that. Um, if you knew me at all my freshman year, um, I guess what she said earlier, I wasn't really looking for good friends at all. I was actually hoping I wouldn't really find them. But uh, they actually found me um, this semester. And um, I guess if you even knew me at the beginning of this year, it's been a, it's been a little bit of a change. And um, I didn't want to be here at all my first year. And um, it's just been really good to see how God has um, just changed me and used me, and um, man, it's pretty crazy. But um, <laughs> that's it. It's pretty crazy. But um, to be honest, like I just I owe this school a ton. I owe some really close friends um, a lot. There's even a possibility that um, I might be working or starting a camp or something someday. Um, been praying a lot about that and uh, could use some more prayers but I just I want you guys to know that probably everybody here has been a huge impact on me and I just want to thank you guys so that's my little testimony Amen. you guys good testimony brother thank you Amen. Hello, I'm not very good at this kind of thing, but I'm going to try. Um, my name is Maria Mills, and I just cannot thank God enough. <laughs> this has been probably the best year of my life, and he's amazing. I, I couldn't even look back and tell you who I was a year and a half ago, um, and I'm so glad for that. And I just, I just really, um, you know, you think you've met every type of person, and then I came to Clearwater Christian College, and I realized that... Um, God's got so many workers, and they just all have so much to offer. And the willingness of of Christ's family is just amazing. They just go out of their way to help and do whatever they can. So I just I just thank the Lord for showing me the the heart through Him instead of what our human heart can really be like. So thank you. I have to say I'm in agreement with Ben. If your heart's out like going and your hands are a little sweaty, it's probably the Holy Spirit telling you you should be up here too. Um, but I just wanted to share a couple things, and just a couple because I don't have time to share as much as I've learned this uh, over the past year. My mom passed away in February, February 2nd, so two months ago yesterday um, from cancer, and it's really been a battle not just for her but for my entire family. But the Lord's really been gracious and has taught me a lot through that time. Um, two scriptures that really 
stand out and have stood out over that time period is Philippians 4, which I'm sure you're familiar with, Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Um, if I can just read it. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to, evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I can testify that I am a walking testimony of that verse. Um, when I was younger, or all, all my life, my mom's pretty much been my best friend, and um, as odd as it would sound, like before I'd go to sleep at night, I'd think things through my head just so I could fall asleep, you know, good things, bad things, and some of the bad things I thought, well, what's the worst thing that could ever happen to me? And I thought every time, like, oh, if, my, if I lost my mom, like, I would just be completely unable to go on. Um, and the funny thing is, the Lord brought that to pass, but um, He really has given the peace that passes understanding you know I can't explain that I people ask me how are you doing and I'm like I'm I'm okay and it's just surprising that I'm able to say that that I'm okay um and then another verse that I like to share is second Corinthians 1 3 through 5 um <coughs> praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our trouble so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. And that verse has um, also been applicable to my life as well because the comfort that Christ has given me, he's also allowed me to comfort some of my other friends who are going through similar things. Um, I had an intern this past summer I worked as an intern and my mentor um, recently lost her mom actually two weeks after I lost my mom and she's a Christian um, but she had started to go a different way I guess from the Lord and so I was able to the Lord was able to use me to minister to her and then just a couple other situations but those two God's peace and him using me and then finally just his provision I was not sure at the beginning of the semester if I was coming back to school here or not uh, I had recently graduated from St. Pete College in, in the summer and was going to start possibly in the fall but then ended up taking the fall off to be at the hospital with my mom and so come December mom was doing okay in and out of the hospital still should I start school? Should I not start school? And I just prayed and had lots of other people praying and, and sought the advice of others. And so finally, I, you know, the last week of December, I decided, okay, let's come here. And when everything happened, my mom in February, I can look back now and say, you know, that was really the Lord that led me here because if I was still at home, I... I probably would be a lot more emotional, and I've received a lot of prayer. So thank you for your prayers here, but also people from my church have been able to minister to me, and I'm not in that environment where I'm constantly being reminded of my mom. I'm I'm here, so I know I have seen the Lord work, and, and those are just a few examples of, of His grace. So thank you. Hey Amen. You begin a semester, and sometimes you think the hardest thing in life is going to be getting through this class or that class or that prof. Uh, you don't ever expect to begin the semester, and by the end of that semester, you'll, one of your parents will be in heaven. And, uh, that's a testimony of the grace of God. Amen. Hey, everyone. My name is Wambua, and I'm a senior. <clears throat> Woo! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, when I was a freshman, I, I mean, I'm from Kenya, and uh, I really can't afford what they pay here for school fees and I came trusting that God will provide and my freshman year it was really it was really um hard and and I mean but I trusted God and let me tell you something from from the end of my freshman year until now I haven't had to pay a single cent everything has been paid for through scholarships and every everything else and I just want to encourage you I know there's so many people who struggle with you know where God will, where finances will come from, and just take my life in as, as an example. Um, thir Psalm 37, um, verse 25 says, the psalmist says, "I was young, now I am old, and I have never seen 
the righteous forsaken of the Lord, or the children begging for bread. I just want to encourage you guys, um, just have faith in God. He works in ways you will never understand, but He will provide for you because He cares for you. My name's Katie, and I just wanted to give a brief testimony, but something that's really um, encouraged me that's happened in my family recently. Um, As most of you know, my parents are missionaries in Brazil, and it's expensive to go home, so I typically don't go home for breaks, unless maybe sometime during the summer for a short break. But um, this past Christmas, my mom really asked me to go home and be with my grandparents in Washington State, because... They don't have a lot of family around, and my parents obviously can't be there for Christmas. So I wasn't too excited about it. I don't have a whole lot of friends. Their their church has really changed, and I don't know many people there anymore. But um, I decided that I really should go, and I tried to have a good attitude. And I'll be honest, at first I wasn't very excited about it. But the Lord just made something happen that was so amazing, and I was so glad that I was there. Um, A day or two after Christmas, my aunt and uncle came over, and my aunt had not been a Christian. She smoked and everything, and my uncle just a few years ago had rededicated his life to Christ, and so it had been exciting to see my uncle do that, and we were just there at the dinner table talking after dinner, and um, I could see that my aunt was really withdrawn and really pensive. And she, later on, while I was doing dishes, came up to my grandma and said, I need to get right with Christ. I want to accept Christ. And so it was so neat to see, like, after so many years of prayer, to see um, something so special in our family happen. And I was so glad that I was there for Christmas. And I could see, wow, Lord, like, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with my family. And so... We may not always understand why our parents want us to do different things, but the Lord is in it. And enjoy being with your family because you never know what's going to happen. Hello, my name is Peter Shadner. For those of you who don't know me, Um, You come to college and you go to your professor and he hands you a syllabus. And he says, here's the lesson I have for you to learn. And you get back to your room, you read over it, and God may reach down and take that syllabus and say, you know what, I have another syllabus for you to learn. And it's kind of interesting. We come to college expecting to learn one thing, but God has a completely different thing to learn. Um, I came to college expecting to learn communications, but I'm learning uh, interpersonal things such as conflict resolution and um, trusting in God for finances and anything else that may come my way. And you know what? Something that's really convicted me is, uh, he says in Jeremiah 29:11, For I know the thoughts I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts for good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And we just need to be able to slow down and find the lesson that he has for us to learn. Jennifer Bolin, and a little over a year ago, um, my sister-in-law was pregnant and expecting a baby, and she suffered a miscarriage at five months, and that was the hardest thing I had ever been through in my entire life. It was just, I was devastated. I didn't understand, and there's the temptation to be really mad at God and say, why did you let this happen? And my church was very supportive. We had a lot of good friends, and they just were there for us, prayed us through the whole thing, but I didn't see the hope that would come afterwards. Um, About five, six months ago in November, she gave birth to a healthy baby girl, and every time I see that little girl, she's like our miracle, and so many things can go wrong, but to have a baby delivered healthy and have no problems, it's just been the biggest blessing, and Even though you might be going through a hard time and you can't see the goodness that comes out of it, it's just 
you can still have hope that God does what's best. And had we had the first baby, we wouldn't have had the second. So it was just a blessing. And the verse that came to my mind almost as soon as it happened was what Job had said, the Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it was very hard to try and sing that song in church. Um, I think the day they made the announcement, if they were singing that song in church, and I just could not sing it. But to see my sister-in-law be able to sing it, and for her to say that she was thankful that it happened, and that God brought her through it, and that she would go through it all over again, was just the biggest blessing to me. And God is good, and even though you don't understand, He always works things out for the best. Uh, Dr. Ebert is scheduled to open in prayer today, and I wanted to ask if you would close in prayer in a moment, if there's another testimony or two, and then I'm going to ask Dan to come up and lead us in a moment of prayer, a reflective prayer of, of uh, the things we've heard this day even um, before we get dismissed. Is there another testimony? Yes, come on up. And then, Dan, if you'll make your way up, we'll have these two, and then we'll have Dr. Ebert come and close us in prayer this morning. Thank you, ladies. <coughs> Hi, my name is Danielle. Um, when I was 10 years old, my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And the summer in between fourth grade and fifth grade, we moved in with her at her house to take care of her. And over four years or so, throughout high school and middle school both, I watched my grandmother deteriorate in front of me, and I had to share a room with her. And for that whole period of time I was angry with God and wanted to know why because she's a very 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 strong Christian lady and an example to everybody and I was just so angry with God that I turned away from him for a while and I realize now that had it not been for that we wouldn't have moved in with her I wouldn't have been at the Christian school that I was and I wouldn't be here now and have the friends that I have and I'm very very blessed for them or to have them. So. Don't let your anger get in the way of a relationship with God because He does know what's best for you. Hi, I'm Mari, and I'm also a senior this year. Very exciting. And um, I just want to attest to the Lord's faithfulness and His great plan for all of us. Um, through my four years here, it's been a roller coaster ride. It's either been, you know, I'm having tons of fun, I'm doing great in my grades, I have friends, and there'd be times where I'm like, Lord, why am I still here? And I've just seen that through my four years here. You know, I'd have friends, and then I'd have no friends, and I'm like, Lord, I can't take this, I'm going to go home. And he keeps telling me, Mari, you have to stay here. And I, and I would be so emotional about it, and I'd cry home to my mom, and I'm like, Mom, I have no friends, I'm lonely, why am I here? And, sorry, I was going to cry. And um, there'd be times where I'm like, Mom, we have no money. Why am I here? And, and the Lord has always told me through these four years, Mari, you belong here. Not through an audible voice, but through his word and just by people encouraging me, Mari. It's, you know, this is a great place. And, you know, the Lord's got something for you. And um, now it's a month left. You know, I can look back and see that the Lord has answered all my prayers. You know, I had prayers of loneliness. And he always brought a friend back, even though he took ones away. And with money, I'm like, Lord, you know, where's the money going to come from? And there's never been a time where I haven't been able to do my laundry or go to Chick-fil-A or, you know, <laughs> or pay for school. And he's just taking care of everything. And I just remember I was one of those people who was like, I'm not going to go to Christian college and get engaged, you know, like my last year and whatever. And even deep down inside, I was like, Lord, I want to find someone at school. And, you know, he brought somebody who was a transfer senior. And, you know, I'm getting married in the summer. And the Lord has just been so faithful. And I just encourage everyone, don't use the easy excuse. I'm going to go home and work for the summer because I need money or... All my friends are gone, so, you know, my life's over, so I can't go to school anymore. Or it's, you know, you know, another college would be easier to go to. Just, you know, this isn't a CCC commercial, I'm sorry. But I just feel like too many of us use the easy way out when the Lord is telling us that we should be here. And, you know, he will reward you for following in his plan, and he will be faithful to you if you're faithful to him. Thank you.
Dr. Ebert, if you'd come, please. And then we remind you, we'll take down these two sections. Freshman education majors will meet with Dr. Smith right here. Brother, if you'd take us to the throne. Why don't we stand together as we pray? Our Father, we are so grateful this morning for the things that we have heard. It is a reminder to us that the gospel is for the nitty gritty of everyday life. And that you, the great creator of the whole universe, loved us so much that you came in the person of your son and took on our human nature and experienced all our trials and sufferings and hardships and all the temptations that come to us. And then you went to the cross uh, to bear our sin and then gloriously rose again that we might have new life, forgiveness, and hope. And we know, Father, this morning that these testimonies have been an evidence of the resurrection, of the fact that you take poor, broken sinners who have no strength in themselves and you change us and you're gracious to us and you teach us how to walk with you and you fill our hearts with hope and joy and we pray Lord that you would seal these words to our hearts today and that if there are any among us who are struggling and about to give up that they might have found hope in the testimonies of their brothers and sisters this morning. We pray that as we move on to the hardness of our lives and the things that you call us to do, that we would learn to live in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of his resurrection. We do not forget to pray, Lord, for this lost and dying world in which we live and the people all around us who do not have hope. And we pray that you would teach us to go the way of the cross, to give up our own rights and privileges, to live as you have shown us for others. And so we commit this time to you. We ask that you would work in our hearts as you see fit. And we will give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 